Praise Him, 
worship your name, Jesus. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you for strengthening us, God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody worship him for just one more minute. Oh, we thank you. You've been so good, God. Nothing else in this world matters because you're there. And you care and you're changing everything. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is such a wonderful touch of the Lord's presence here. If you missed Pastor's post on the private group the other day, uh, you really need to join the private group on Facebook. It is TPC Hollister Private, I think. You have to be approved. The only way you get approved is if you're a member of the church or somebody who comes on a regular basis. Uh, we share things there that we don't share with the rest of the world. It's just for our church family. And Pastor shared there the other day that there is a powerful service ahead of us. There is a tremendous amount of deliverance coming from the Lord today. I feel like people have been praying. It feels like people have been fasting and touching heaven for a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. If you have come with any needs today, you came on the right day. Amen. We want to welcome everybody to the Pentecostal Church, all of our friends, our guests, those watching online. Why don't we give everybody a hand? We're so glad that you could join us at the Pentecostal Church today. At this time, we encourage you to give online or through the TPC Hollister app, which you can find in the App Store or in Google Play. If you're here in person and you want to give using the plates up here on the platform, please do so with your mask whenever you feel comfortable. We do have some announcements this afternoon that I am excited to share. The first of those is a reminder that all of our youth events have changed to Friday nights at 7 p.m. We had an amazing youth class here on Friday night that Brother Cameron taught. And let me tell you, that was some top grade teaching. It was top notch. I enjoyed it very much, and uh, I got to hear it twice, so it was that good. Our Connect groups are going to be starting up again here shortly. We will be kicking off on January 10th of next year, Lord willing. Things will be a little bit looser, a little bit more relaxed, and there won't be as many COVID restrictions. So we're going to go ahead and plan for a small semester in the winter of 2021, beginning on January 10th. If you would like to lead a connect group, please reach out to me, send me a text or a call or catch me after church. Promise not to cough on you, I'll be wearing a mask and uh, we'll be happy to get you set up with leading a connect group. There will be a cookie exchange and get together for all of our hostesses and anybody who's interested in being a hostess. They'll be meeting at Sister's, Sister Bridget's house at 12 p.m. on Saturday, December 5th. Bake your favorite batch of Christmas cookies to bring to the exchange. And please, ladies, bring some home for your husband. Because we love Christmas cookies. And we would be happy to share them with you. So that's taking place on Saturday, December 5th. Please see Sister Bridget if you need any more information. There will also be a joint youth and hyphen Thanksgiving themed event this Friday, the 20th. We're not going to tell you all the details, but it does involve food, which means everybody wants to come because there's food. So this is for our young people and our hyphens. We're going to celebrate Thanksgiving together on the 20th at 7 p.m. Please see our planning committee for the Cameron, Sister Anna, Sebastian, or Tori for details, and text messages are forthcoming with more information. You may be seated. Why don't we worship together with the choir as they sing? Oh, never mind. Pastor's here. We're going to get a certificate out. Sister Ayana Gomez. Sister Ayana. Where is Sister Ayana? Okay, take your mask off so we can tell who you are. Uh, we're going to take a picture of Sister Ayana. 
Everybody say amen. Amen. We have an intercessor over here. His mother joined the choir, and he's really touched of God. Give Aon a good hand clap. God bless you.
Let's praise him some more. Everybody, you ought to praise the Lord. Find it in your heart. Find it in your heart to give God praise and thanks. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Praise him again, church. Praise him again. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Now this past Thursday, this past Thursday afternoon, the Lord spoke to me. And uh, it was not a day that I had given myself to prayer or fasting. Uh, this Thursday we had um, our walkthrough. I've told some of you that the Lord in the middle of this pandemic's given Sister Hurst and I a home. And so we walked. Amen. It's been a day that... Uh, Sister Hurst and I have been waiting on for 18 years. If you would have told us when we moved here 16 years ago that it would be 18 years before we would sign papers on another house, we might have turned around and left. Uh, thank God. Uh, God don't show us everything. He don't show us all the journey. But we are comforted in that the Lord blesses us on the journey. And the way the Lord did this, I don't have time to go into the details. But the Lord, would, it's like how he's going to operate today. It's effortless. When he says it's time, nothing can stand in the way. And uh, the doors just open. So Thursday, we had our walkthrough that's about two and a half hours. They walk through every little detail, every little fan, every switch, all the things on the outside and on the inside. And then we had about an hour before we went to the uh, office to sign papers. And I told Ron, I said, I'm, I'm ready for lunch. Let's go get us a bite to eat. So we're sitting at a restaurant, and we're, our, our hearts and our minds are full, and we're not thinking about God. And the Lord spoke to me as plain as I'm speaking to you right now. And he said, I am going to show up Sunday. And I am going to perform. Amen. Amen. And I went from a uh, I went from a dead stop. I burst out in tears. Rhonda looked at me and she said, "What's wrong?" Because I I wasn't thinking about God. I do think about God and I do pray and I do fast, but not that. At that time, it's just like the Lord had to interrupt me and say, I'm coming to church on Sunday and I'm going to perform. I'm going to perform healings. I'm going to perform miracles. I'm going to set I'm going to set people free from fear. I'm going to set people free from doubt. I'm going to set people free from demonic oppression. Amen. 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 So, uh, I don't know exactly how God's going to do this, but I know he's going to do this. So, I'm going to give you some instruction before I do what I'm supposed to do. Um, I, think, I think a lot of things that are going to happen today are attached to the obedient saint who is coming to the prayer room. I 
Just do. You know, God can answer prayers anywhere. God can hear prayers from anywhere. But for some reason, the Lord has put it in my heart and by now should have put it in your heart if I'm your pastor and if you're obedient. Well, the amens are not there right now. That you ought to come at least once a week Make the sacrifice, make the journey. The Lord told me, he said, I'm going to put my spirit in this room. I'm going to put my spirit in this room, and from that room shall spring forth a great revival. That's what he told me. Amen. So in the, in the, middle, in the middle of the pandemic, we finished the prayer room. And we started praying, and we made it to where anybody could come at any time, uh, and people are coming. So I want to I say to those of you that have been obedient and those of you that have answered the call, this is your day. I think you have pretty much carte blanche. Whatever you can believe God for, God's going to give it to you. I really believe that. Amen. I think the Lord is wanting today to establish in the hearts and minds of this church that, that he has a special touch in the prayer room and wants you to go, wants you to be a part of the unity, the unity, not just prayer, but the unity in prayer and sacrifice. For some of you, it takes an extra 30 minutes. It takes, depending on the time of day, it takes uh, time to drive in from Morgan Hill or Gilroy or San Juan Batista or, or uh, the Salinas or, or wherever you drive from around here. This is a church that we have people that come from all around. And, uh, and you can say, well, God can hear my prayer here. All right, you have a disobedient spirit. I'm not telling you have to come every day. I'm telling you, you need to make a consecration. Mm, I'm as anointed right now as I'm going to be all day and make the journey and say, Lord, I may not understand this, but I believe in the man of God. And I'm going to be obedient. And if, if you need the gas money, ask the Lord if he'll give you extra gas money. I tell you, he will. He will. Amen. 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 I feel like I need to say, uh, I feel like I need to say this. Every word I speak today, it will not fall to the ground. And I'm going to tell you in 16 years of me pastoring in this church, not one word have I spoken that it has not come to pass when I say, thus saith the Lord. You should believe in the man of God. And you shouldn't be listening to people that's telling you to move and telling you bad things are coming your way and telling you hard times are coming. They're not a prophet, neither are they a prophetess. You want a prophet, you look up here. I know when God speaks to me and it will come to pass. Some of you have let confusion, some of you have let confusion come into your spirit because you're opening yourself up to false prophets. You need to quit letting people speak into your life. Some of you that have been tormented is because of a false word from God. God no more said that in the man of moon. And you should have come to the pastor and said, I need some clarification. I would give you clarification. Have I ever directed you wrong? Never. 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 I'm glad for all of our visitors here today. And you just have to trust that I know what I'm doing or don't trust, whatever. But God's going to move in this house. If you come with a need... There's going to be plenty extra that can splash up on you. God can forgive you of your sins, fill you with the Holy Ghost, 
you can receive the Holy Ghost, be baptized in Jesus' name, or you can sit there and be a doubter and leave the same way that you came at, in. Uh, I'm just going to tell you, my main target is the saints of God today. God is showed up to bless his people. He has showed up to bless his people. Amen. Now this is what this is what I'm going to do. Uh, God called me to preach. Now when he wants me to work in the gifts of the Spirit, he tells me specifically, and I do. I don't try to do all of that until the Holy Ghost uh, tells me. And then if he tells me, then we do it. But I don't have to get permission to preach because I am called to preach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start preaching about the power of God. And God's going to move in here and start working and doing and touching. I don't know how far I'm going to get. I don't know if this is going to blow up. Uh, but I, I do want to say that if you want what you want from God, when I touch on it, when I get around it, you ought to, you ought to jump in the pool. You ought to move toward God like the blind Barnabas saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. I'm telling you, the, the squeaking will, the squeaking will is going to get the oil. The person that steps out, are you listening to me? The person that steps out in faith and does an act of faith is going to receive from God. So I, I, I don't think you, I wouldn't sit there with my hands folded and saying, well, if God really wants to give me something, uh, then he's just going to have to pour it on me. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you, this is how God's going to work today. Today. Today, the Lord's saying, reach for it. Jump in the pool. Stand up and declare it. Shout the victory. If you can say it, you can have it. Oh, whatever you've been praying for, whatever you've been praying for, whatever you've been praying for, especially what you've been praying for in that prayer room, God has heard your prayer. And he has come to perform a miracle for you today, a healing, a cleansing, a deliverance, whatever it is that you've been asked in God. Raise your hands and thank him in advance for what he is going to do. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pull it up. Yeah, all right. Now over here, this one's back too far. Hallelujah. Yeah. About an inch and a half. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to have my pulpit back. Amen. First Samuel chapter 14. First Samuel chapter 14. Let us look into the holy writ. 1 Samuel chapter 14. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come, let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. From our text today, I want to point out the Lord, that the Lord will work for us. Everybody say that the Lord will work for us. The Lord is here today to work for you. The Lord is here to do what you cannot do. And there is, for there is no restraint to the Lord. Say that with me. For there is no restraint to the Lord. Say it again. For there is no restraint to the Lord. 
to save by many or by few. You may be seated. The passage of Scripture that we are reading from is, is one of those exciting passages of Scripture in the history of Israel. Jonathan is a young prince. He never gets to serve as king. He would have been a great king. Uh, he had noble qualities about him. He was very, very much qualified to be a king, but he couldn't because of the sin of his father Saul. And this is one of those instances where Jonathan shows his strife, shows his character. The people of God are at war with a number, uh, an enemy that is numbered whose number is superior to uh, their number. And Jonathan is wanting to do something for God. But he's not, he's not reckless, but he is young and full of desire. He wants to be used of God. I'm going to stop and say that the Lord is very pleased with the young people in this church that have a desire to be used by God in their youth, in their youth. And I want to tell you, God is going to use you in your youth. God is going to use you. You don't have to be 20 years old for God to use you. You don't have to be 25 or 30 before you arrive at a place where God can use you. God shows us in his word time and time again how he has used young people that has sold out to him. Jonathan was one of those young men uh, who seemed to have found faith in God and believed, believed that his God was the mighty God, believed that his God could do no wrong and was all-powerful and could deliver at any time, he said to his armor bearer, he said, now they were kind of scouting out and they were looking for uh, the enemy and they saw the enemy. They was hidden from the enemy. Now what they could have done, they had done their duty. They had done their duty as they was reconnoitering uh, with the enemy and spying out the land. They could have stopped, pulled back, and went and told uh, where this garrison of enemy soldiers were. But Jonathan wanted to be used of God. He wanted victory in his life. He wanted to be in the thick of the fight. And so he said to his armor bearers, just the two of them, he said, what we're going to do is we're going to step out and expose ourselves to the enemy. And he said, if God uh, it wants us to go up, they're going to taunt us. And they're going to say, come on up and try us out. And he said, if they do that, that's going to be a sign from the Lord that we will go up and we will s slay these 20 some odd men. Two to 20. Two to 20. And so... Uh, he said, but if they don't say, uh, come up to us and taunt us, he said, then we're going to, we're, we got a good head start. We can outrun them and we can get back to the encampment of our army before. So that was their plan. And he said this here, he said, let us go over unto the garrison of the uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us. And uh, for there is no restraint to the Lord. He believed God could do anything. He was, just, he was just waiting for the right opportunity. And so in verse 10, he said, But if they say, Come up unto us, we will go up. Because that's the sign the Lord has delivered them into our hand. And this shall be a sign unto us. Now this story gets very big, very quick, because when they expose themselves to the enemy, the enemy 
taunting and mocking, said, come on up. Try us, to take us on. Try your luck with us. And Jonathan and his armor bearer, notice what that armor bearer said. He said to Jonathan, I am with you. Do what's in your heart. I've got your back. I want to tell some of you, it's time for you to say to the man of God, I am with you. Do what's in your heart. I've got your back. Does it look like, does it look like I need your help? Does it look like it's not going to get done if you don't get on the bandwagon? Absolutely not. There is a unity. There is a forcefulness in this church already. We're going to do it with or without you. I am telling you, this is for your benefit. You need to say, come on, man of God. I am with you. Do what's in your heart. I want to experience the blessings of God. I want to experience revival. I want my family to be blessed. I want my children to be blessed. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord has already told me some of you that are here today has had trouble with preachers and you don't trust any preacher. You cannot be saved if you don't trust a preacher. God chose to save them that believe by the foolishness of preaching. That's how it's always been. I am sorry if you are hurt. I am sorry if you've been let down, but not all men of God have failed. God still got 7,000 that have not bowed a knee unto Baal, and you're looking at one of them right here, right now, today. I'm not apologizing for God's plan. You got to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Oh, somebody preach with me. You got to say, Jesus, I need you more now than I've ever needed you before. I need the church. I need the man of God. I want to make it. We've come too far not to make it. Somebody preach with me right now. Hallelujah. Amen. There is. I am preaching today. There is no restraint unto the Lord. Now, if somebody starts praying, as long as I can preach over them, don't you worry about what's going on. God's speaking to people. I've told certain people to be led by the Spirit. You've got to stay focused here. Amen. Amen. All oh, raise your hands and praise the Lord, everybody. Raise your hands and praise the Lord. There is no restraint to the Lord. God can do anything. Why don't you say that as you're praying? God can do anything. God can answer any prayer. God can help me with any situation. There is no restraint unto the Lord. I'm preaching today. God can do anything. God can do anything. Psalms 115 and verse 3. Psalms 115 and verse 3 says, The Lord our God is in heaven and hath done whatsoever he pleased. If God wants to do it, he'll do it. And he told me Thursday about, uh, Thursday about 2.30, 3 o'clock, right around that area, he said, I'm coming to church today to perform. You tell the people, you tell the people I'm coming with my bag full of gifts. I have all the healing that you need. I have all the deliverance that you need. I have all the victory that you need. God's going to put a song in your heart. Job, Job chapter 42 said in the last chapter, after doubting God, complaining to God, wondering why bad things had happened to him, Job said in the last chapter of his writing, he said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Brother Hurst, I just, I'm, I'm struggling that, that the world's out of control. I'm struggling that my life's out of control. I just don't know what to do. I'm telling you, Job lost 10 kids at one time. He lost all of his wealth and he lost his health. 
and he did go through some doubting, and he did go through some questioning, but he finally, he finally humbled himself under the mighty hand of God. He said, I'm going to let God be God, and I'm going to be his follower. And he said, I believe God can do everything and that there's nothing that God cannot do. I don't know why God did this, but I know he's God. And I'm going to follow him and let him work out the details in his own time. Uh Aha. Some of you are going through things in your life. And you keep trying to figure it out. And you keep questioning God. This is your moment right here. This is, I'm talking to somebody right now. And you're saying, God, you got to explain this to me. Don't ask God to explain. He's not a good explainer. He left us his book. you got to find the answer in his book. God doesn't answer why. Why did I have that accident? Why did my mom die of cancer? Why did this happen to so-and-so? Why does the world have this happen to it? Why are you letting this? Listen, you can spend all your days like Job did for 42 chapters trying to figure it out, and God will not speak to you. But when God finally gets ready to speak, he says, I don't owe you an apology, and I don't owe you an explanation. I created the world, and I created everything that's in it, and I'll do exactly what I want to do. Don't sit here and tempt the Lord. Don't sit here and tempt the Lord and and talk back to the Lord while I'm preaching. You humble yourself under the hand of God. Don't you say, I don't need God. God God's liable to strike you dead where you sit today. God could take your life before you walk out. He owns the breath in your lungs. He owns the heart beating in your chest. I'm telling you, God's playing hardball with somebody today. And I'm risking you being offended at me, but I can't help it anymore because I'm under the influence of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, God's got your number. And he knows, he knows where you're at. And he knows what you're going through. And he can answer and turn your world upside right. God can fix the problem. But you've got to say, he is God. And though he slay me, Yet will I trust in him. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm. Is anybody going to get a hold of that today? Is that what you needed from God? If that's what you need from God, I'd be on my feet saying, I receive it, I receive it. I receive that word from the Lord. It is mine. A rich young ruler came to the Lord in Matthew chapter 19, a very good, fine man. Uh, Had a lot of good qualities. Had lived for the Lord. Knew the scripture well. And uh, the Lord was very impressed with him. But you never impress God so much that he doesn't ask for something else. Remember, the Lord knows you from the inside out. He created you in the womb of your mother. And the Lord knows all there is to know about you. And so he said to the rich young ruler after he had quizzed him a little bit. In fact, the scripture says that the Lord was touched in his heart and moved and and loved this young man. And he said, thou lackest one thing, sell all that thou hast and give it to the poor and come and follow after me. And the Bible said the rich young man departed for he was wealthy and he had much goods. And he he wanted to have God, but he wanted, here I come again to this, he wanted to have God on his terms. You don't get to tell God the terms You have to come up to his table. Oh, I am rubbing somebody the wrong way. Well, then be a pauper. Suffer. Live in your depression. Live in your addiction. Come to the table of the Lord. 
and say, Lord, I sit at the table today. What are the terms? If you say whatever you say, I will do it. That's half the battle right there. When you make up your mind, it don't matter what I have to do. I am going to get this from the Lord. I am needy. I want it. I hunger for it. I'm telling you, that's half the battle right there. Nothing that you want from God is too hard for God to do. Exactly right now, right here, God can change the situation. God can heal your body. God can deliver your mind. God can set you free from demonic oppression. (coughs) Yeah. And to come. Think about this, to come this close to getting a private audience with Jesus Christ and then turning and walking away. He wasn't that smart after all. He wasn't that astute after all. He turned and he walked away because he loved his stuff more than he loved the Lord. And I want to tell you, until you love him more than your stuff, you are not going to be fit for the kingdom of heaven. And, and he turned to the disciples. It was a moment, a poignant moment, and everybody saw it. And, and they probably recognized that this was a, a young nobleman that would have been wonderful for their cause and, and to join their gospel band. And when he turned and he walked away, the Lord turned to his disciples and he says, it is very, very hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, there's other places where he took time to explain that, but he made this statement that day. He said, it's hard for rich people to come to to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And uh, the disciples said, they said, Lord, who then can be saved? If this guy, with all the stuff that he has, uh, if if he can't be saved, uh, who can be saved? In Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26, And Jesus beheld them, looked them dead in the eye, and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. There is somebody here right now, and you're saying, I, I can't believe this preacher saying these things, and I can't believe he's talking like this, and I can't believe he's preaching with such authority, and, and part of it rankles you, and part of it you admire it. And you're like, you can't talk to people like this in 2020. Well, I am. For with men, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. You see, this is not my church, and I'm not trying to build a crowd. I'm trying to get a people ready for the coming of the Lord. And I'm preaching to them the word of God. And with God, all things. Don't tell me I can't have revival in 2020. Don't tell me there's not people that want to serve God with all their heart and all their might and all their strength and all their soul. With God. Oh, somebody say amen. With God, all things are possible. Uh Uh Devil, you are a liar. You think this uh, is going to shut the church down? You think the government can shut the church down? You think a pandemic can shut the church down, you're picking on the wrong church. And I know that there is over one-third of the churches in America that are closing today, and people are going broke because saints stopped coming to church. They weren't saints to begin with. They was ain'ts. And, and now they can't get them to come back. And I'm wondering about some of you that don't have a medical condition and you haven't come back. You're not a saint. You're an ain't, and you're backslid. You need to fall on your knees and ask God to forgive you and get yourself to the house of God. That's, that's, not, that's not half of it. I'm telling you, that's not half of what you have allowed into your house. 
and you've allowed into your heart and the things that you're doing and you think you're still living for God, you're not. You're not. I'm confronting you today. And I am telling you that you have the ability to come back to the house of God. You just don't have it in your heart anymore. You need to pack up your stuff and get to the house of God and come to this altar and say, Jesus, I'm as backslid as a goose lost in high weeds. Help me today, Lord. Help me today to be restored. I love you, but I got to tell you like it is. Amen. 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 Well, somebody praise the Lord and start believing God for backsliders to come back to God. Start believing God. Woo! I want to preach to this church, God can save any backslider. The Lord saved my son and brought him back into the church. And today he's worshiping God. Today he's in the house of God. And he's living for the Lord. He found him a pastor. He believes in. He found him a church. If God can do it for me, then God can do it for you. If God can do it for Rhonda and I, then God can do it for you and your family. Quit doubting God and shout it out. God can save my daughter. God can save my son. God can save my parents. Lord, bring back the backslider. Bring back my lost loved one. Oh. Amen. Gabriel. Gabriel came to, you may be seated. Gabriel came to uh, speak to Mary. This is found in Luke 137. Doesn't take that long, Matt. Speak the word and go on. Don't wrestle with that spirit. Speak to that spirit. Don't worry about him. I'm training him. This is the greatest man of God you're going to see in the next 25 years right here. I'm going to... Train him and turn him loose. That's right, I said it. I'm going to train him and turn him loose, and he's going to have a revival that's going to astound. Not putting out no pussyfoot preacher. I'm going to put out preachers that are called of God, that are full of the power of the Holy Ghost, that are devoted, that live what they preach. That's right. Speak the word. Speak the word. Don't touch them anymore. Speak the word. I'm speaking the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You ought to say, I receive it. I receive it. Some of you got a little deal. We're not touching not none of you. Not another person's going to get their hands touched. The Lord said, I'm showing up. We We don't have to come over there and touch you. We'll come over there and speak to you and say, this is the word of the Lord for you. God has sent healing into your body. God has sent deliverance into your mind. Glory. Now I want to talk to you with those of you that have physical needs in your body. Gabriel came and was speaking to Mary. And in the course of the conversation, he said, your cousin Elizabeth, who was a much older lady than Mary. Mary was possibly 16 or 17, maybe be even as young as 15 years old. Elizabeth was at least twice that age. She had been barren all of her life. And so Mary told, uh, Gabriel told Mary, he said, uh, your, your, your cousin Elizabeth is pregnant. And that which is conceived in her, it's, it's, a, thing, it's a thing from God. And, uh, and Mary uh, kind of has an astonished reaction. 
And Gabriel says in Luke chapter 1 and verse 37, For with God nothing shall be impossible. He's talking about a, a barren woman that's been married many years and has never been able to conceive. And, and, and Mary's excited and she's blown away with that, what the angel says to her. says, you're going to conceive and that which is going to be inside of you is of the Holy Ghost. You're not, you're not going to get this from a man. It's the Holy Ghost that's going to overshadow you. And that, that's the word of God. And you will call his name Jesus and, and speaks to her this prophecy. And he said, your cousin's pregnant too. And, and her child's going to be a special child for the Lord. And Mary is kind of just excited. And, and the angel turns and looks at her kind of like, nothing with God is impossible. God can do anything in your body. God can do anything in your body. You know, I always wince when I hear this argument about uh, abortion. And, and it's, it's my body, and I'll do what I want with it. Well, you are so wrong. Because the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And you are to glorify God in your body. That's why you can't dress it any way you want to dress it. And act any way you want to act. Because your body doesn't belong to you. Your body belongs to the Holy Ghost. A lot of people's going to go to A lot of people's going to go to hell. A lot of people's going to be lost how they treat their body. The Bible said uh, he said if you defile your body, if you defile the temple of the Holy Ghost, God shall also destroy you. And if you're destroying your body with practices that are not right and you're drinking and you're smoking and you're doing drugs, and you're being promiscuous and having uh, sex with multiple partners and having risky behavior. That's you're you're wrong. You're wrong with God. And you say, well, it's my body, and I'll do what I want to it, buddy. Let me tell you something. God owns your body, and He created it, and He knows what you're doing with it, and He knows what pollutants you're giving it. And he said, you, you, don't you treat that body any old way. That's my body. Now, God owns your body. Whether you acknowledge it or not, you'll stand at the white throne judgment, and you will remember that there was a preacher that said, you, you ought to stop doing that. That's not good for you. Well, who, who, I'm just, that's in the book. That's, that's why I have the authority to preach this, because you are not your own. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, which is not your own, but is the Lord's. God can do anything at any time to your body. Now, the Lord has come to heal those of you that are sick. The Lord has come to heal those of you that have prayed in there and said, oh, God, I am suffering, and I need you to heal my body. I am speaking the word of God. He is sending his word and healing your body right now. The Lord is healing your body. For nothing is impossible. Let the virtue flow over you. I sure wouldn't sit there and say, well, I haven't felt. I'd be jumping in the pool. I'd be reaching for it. I receive the word of God. I receive my healing. I receive my strength. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody praise the Lord for healing. God's putting things right. God's putting things right. God's putting things right. 
in your body. Woo! Nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many is declaring God's touched your body and healed you right now? Raise your hand if you feel like God's touched you. You believe in God's touched you. Oh, raise it tall. Don't doubt. Don't be a half... Half-hearted, raise say yes. Yeah. <laughs> For with God nothing is impossible. For with God nothing is impossible. He said, I'm coming and I'm going to perform. He's performing right now. <laughs> Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Hurst, is it that easy? Yep. When the Lord does it, it's that easy. He just sends his word and heals you. All you got to do is thank him for it. Praise him for it. Now I want to talk I want to talk to you about those of you that have demonic oppression, uh, evil habits. I want to talk to you about the Lord has the divine ability to save to the uttermost. The Lord will go to great lengths to save you and then the Lord will go to great lengths to cleanse you and purify you. Hebrews 7:25. Wherefore, he is able, somebody say he is able, able. also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So what this passage of scripture is saying, he's there in the beginning, he's there in the middle, and he'll be there in the ending. It doesn't matter what you're bringing to God. It doesn't matter what kind of sin that you're bringing to God. Now, that's another reason why God's going to build this church, and it's going to have a lot of people, and a lot of people's going to go, how do they do that? What is that? Because we let anybody come. It, it don't, some churches, well, you can't come unless you've got a certain education, and you live in a certain part of town, and you've got a certain balance in your book. This ain't no country club. This is a hospital. This, this is a, a jailbreak. It don't matter if you've been to prison. It don't matter if you've done drugs. It don't matter if you've committed crime. It don't matter if, if you've got the spirit of perversion on you. If you've got addiction to nicotine, it don't matter. The Lord is able to save to the uttermost. You can have a lying spirit. You can have a lying spirit. Mm. The Lord's here to deliver some of you from a lying spirit. You'd rather tell a lie than tell the truth. God's going to put a bad taste in your mouth the next time you start telling a lie. And you're going to gag. Ha! The Lord's going to put a gag in your throat. and You're going to have a coffin fit. And you're going to try to tell a lie and that something's going (coughs) to... You're going to start coughing. And all of a sudden you're going to remember, the Lord loves me so much... He is gagging me right now and told the man of God to tell me. Oh, God's got his hand on you. I said God's got his hand on you. And he has come to deliver you right now. The Lord has come to deliver you right now. There is nothing that you are facing. I'm talking about the spirit of suicide. I'm talking about the spirit of loneliness. I'm talking about the spirit of fear. It is running crazy in America. But this is not just America. This is the people of God. And God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. 
Are you going to preach with the pastor right now? God is breaking. Look up there and see that chain. See that chain break. Remember what the choir said. Do what you're famous for, Lord. Move that mountain. Woo! I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Move that mountain. I don't care how big it is. Shout now. Move that mountain. If you say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in thy heart whatsoever things thou sayest, you will have them. Move that mountain. God's breaking the spirit of fear. Some of you haven't had a good night's sleep. Some of you haven't had a good night's sleep in months. I am telling you, God is going to let you sleep like a baby tonight with a full belly. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You're going to be refreshed. You're not going to have fear. Right now, the Lord is cleaning your house out. He's dispatching angels. And the angels are running out the demons of fear and suicide and loneliness. Ah, that's right. That's right. God wants to bless you more than you can imagine. Sit down, I want to talk to you. Everybody say, how much more? Say, how much more? Oh, don't mumble it. Say it. How much more? How much does God want to bless you? How much more does God want to bless you? Listen to this. When Jesus was going into Jerusalem, there was such a move of praise of, among his followers. They took off of their coat and they laid it in the street as the Lord rode that foal of an ass over the top of those coats. And there was some nasty spirited Pharisees in the crowd. And they said, Lord, tell these people to be quiet. This is becoming embarrassing. I'm telling you, don't be quiet. I'm telling you, don't stop praising God. We got too many churches that have lost their power because they've lost their praise. They've lost their authority because they've lost their worship. The more the church worships, the more the church praises God, the more the power of God is exalted, the more the Spirit of the Lord is lifted up. Yeah! <laughs> you ought to praise the Lord every time you walk inside the church. It don't matter if you feel bad or feel good. It don't matter if it's been a good week or a bad week. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And I, into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. <laughs> Come on, praise the Lord in your home. Praise the Lord where you're watching this at. If you'll start praising the Lord, the Holy Ghost will walk in there and help you. God wants to save you. God wants to forgive you. How much more? He said in Luke, 11, uh, Luke 19, 39 and 40, he said, if I tell these people to be quiet, the very rocks will cry out. The Lord loves you way much more than he likes rocks. Say, I'm better than a rock. Say, much more. The Lord said in Matthew 10, 29, he sees every sparrow that falls. Say, the Lord loves me more than the sparrows. If he sees the suffering of the sparrows that fall, if he watches the quiet beat of the small heart in the pharaoh, the sparrow that falls, then the Lord knows the brokenness in your heart 
and he loves you much more than the sparrow. Don't suffer anymore. Take your broken heart and put it in the hands of the Lord right now. Say, God, I can't bear it no more. A wounded heart, who can bear? A broken spirit, who can bear? I'll tell you who can help you. Jesus can help you with your broken heart. Jesus can help you with your troubled mind. Take it to the Lord right now. I'd cry out to the Lord like blind Barnabas and say, Jesus, I'm bringing you my heart. I'm bringing you my fear. I'm bring, I don't want them no more. I don't want them in my mind no more. I don't want them in my heart no more. Hebrews 9, 13 through 15 said, If the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, how much more? Somebody say it. How much more? Say it again. How much more? Turn to your neighbor and say, how much more? Don't giggle. Don't laugh. Don't be sarcastic. God loves you so much more. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience? I speak the word of the Lord unto you right now. God, right now, is purging fear and shame and, and hurt and doubt. I speak to the spirit of suicide right now. I command you in the name of Jesus to leave. And don't you come back. And don't you wait in the car. You are a trespasser. There they go. There they go. I'm telling you that the joy of the Lord is building up. It's building up. The angels of the Lord are, are, are flapping around, flying around. The Spirit of the Lord is working, 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 working. Did you not believe that he was going to show up? Did you not know that God is alive and that he loves you so much more? That's your spirit. That's your spirit. The Lord's cleansing it. The Lord's setting it free. He ever liveth to make intercession for you. Give it to the Lord. 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 It to the Lord. You got a word right here? You have a word? Give it to the Lord. I'm, I'm releasing it. I'm releasing it right now. It belongs to the Lord. The Lord's going to take care of it. Woo! Brother Hurst, is it that easy? There is no restraint to the Lord. There is no restraint. Now I want to talk to you about your flesh. Those of you that are struggling in your flesh, you may be seated. Just keep worshiping the Lord. Let me try to minister to somebody else that's struggling in your flesh. If you're struggling, you're, we've been talking about God. There's no restraint to the Lord to deal with your spirit. God can save to the uttermost that come unto him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession. So what about our flesh? The flesh is a big deal, right? The, there's some things that get in our flesh. Uh, one of the things that the Bible says you don't want to do is, is get into the sensual uh, pleasures of the flesh because 
it co- it, that it gets in your flesh. And once you have experienced that, your flesh has experienced that, then, then the pleasures of sin, you've exposed yourself to the pleasures of sin. Not saying you can't have pleasure. God made sex to be pleasurable, and, uh, but it's supposed to be within the parameters of the commitment of marriage. That's what sanctifies that flesh act. The sanctity of marriage. God made it. He wants you to have sex, have a lot of sex with your husband if you're a woman and your wife. Can you believe God said this? If you're a man. Right? Nothing else. No two men or two women or three or four. Just one one on one. God made all the parts, fits, everything works. A lot of ecstasy, a lot of love, a lot of... Man, somebody said, boy, talk about the flesh. It's here now. I don't want you to think, uh, don't feel sorry for us. We're happy. I I can walk into the bank. They say, Reverend, how you doing? And I go, happy. They say, I just love that. Well, I don't say that to make you feel good. I say that because I am happy. I'm a one God apostolic tongue talking holy roller born again heaven bound believer in the liberated power of Jesus name I've been washed in the blood sanctified by the spirit I believe in holiness I suggest that you would do the same I was set free at a Pentecost altar on my knees and pardon me if I'm not ashamed to me I one God apostolic tongue talking holy roller born again heaven bound believer in the liberated that's a problem with some of you you're ashamed it's either the time to be a pig or be a dog So what's that mean? Well, go figure it out. It's time to either get in or get out. It's time to live for God with all your heart or just go on and do what you want to do. You're going to hell anyhow. We're running out of time, folks. Be a pig or be a dog. Turn to somebody and say, be a pig or be a dog. Say, you know what Brother Hurst talk about? I don't know. It's a joke. No, not that, but it's a joke. Now, so I'm talking about those of you that have the habits in your flesh, habits in your flesh. There's two things that God can do when it comes to the cleansing of the flesh. Notice in uh, the epistle it says, uh, perfecting holiness in the fear of God uh, w- through the cleansing of the spirit and uh, the cleansing of the flesh. Two different things, two different operations. God cleanses our spirit, God cleansing our flesh. Once a spirit has got its hands in you and, and you got it in your flesh, then you need to be delivered. These, these demonic spirits are in your flesh, are in your flesh. There's a guy in, uh, let me find it here, who, who Jesus... Um, came up on the shore in the land of Gadarenes. This is in Mark chapter 5, the land of Gadarenes. And there was a man that was living in the hills, in the mountains, and in the graveyard. <clears throat> and the community had tried to help him. They had bound him with chains. And under the power of the devil, he had broke those chains. They bound him with ropes. He had broke those ropes. And he was un controllable and he lived howling like a beast in the night at the moon and Jesus came across the sea and his boat slid up on the smooth sands at that seashore and that man who was possessed of the devil ran and fell at the feet of Jesus and worshiped when God's presence comes into anything's possible at any time And this man who had been devil-possessed, was devil-possessed, worshipped God. You know what that lets me know? It don't matter how many devils you have in you. If you want to, you can worship God. And the demons were taken by surprise. And they spoke out. Of that man, they spoke out of him and they said, leave us alone. We know who you are. You've come to torment us before our time. 
Don't send us to hell. Don't send us to the pit. See, all devils know where sin goes. God created hell for the devil and his angels. And they know they're headed there. There's no Calvary for them. There's no church for them. There's no pastor for them. They are damned now. And they are damned forever. And so they said, don't send us. It's not time. Please be merciful. And they said, let us go into this pig, those pigs. There's a big herd of 2,000 pigs. They said, send us into the pigs. We'd rather be in the pigs and go to hell. And the Lord said, well, you're leaving. You're leaving this man now. You're leaving. Now, he said unto him, come out of this man, thou unclean spirit. Come out of this man, thou unclean spirit. I say unto you by the word of the Lord, come out of this man, of this woman, in the name of Jesus, now. Nicotine, come out now. Anger, come out now. Laziness, come out now. Rage, come out now. Addiction to violence, come out now. You ought to stand up and raise your hands. If God's talking to you, he's releasing you. This is the day you walk out into a new life. It's that easy. It's that simple. The Lord has come to break that which has held you in bondage. I'm not going to try to talk to you. Jump in the pool. Jump in the pool. I receive it. I receive it. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. I speak to you the word of Jesus right now. Come out of this man. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God's breaking addiction right now. God's breaking addiction right now. God's doing a work right now. Unclean spirits are gone in Jesus' name. Somebody thank the Lord for it right now. Do you feel it? Sense it? Unclean spirits. Don't matter how many you got, God can send 12,000 out at one time. Oh, somebody needs to shout the voice of victory. Shout with the voice of victory. Shout with the voice of triumph. Shout with the voice of faith. There is no restraint unto the Lord. In Jesus' name. Now I'm almost done, but the Holy Ghost is still working. I want to say to those of you that are suffering, uh, uh, I feel like I need to talk to somebody. There's a few things, special instruction. The Lord's saying to some of you, I'm going to, I'm going to give you your joy back if you are praying for your joy. I, I don't want to embarrass anybody, so I'm just, you know who I'm talking about. Listen to this. The Lord, when the choir was singing, I was sitting there, 
watching the choir sing. And, and the Lord said, now I'm going to give joy back. Some of you have had joy and you've lost your joy. But he said, you tell those that are seeking joy. You need to sing for it. I said, okay, what do well, you want me to get them? He said, no, they need to get in the choir. You can say he's, he, he, he's either speaking the word of the Lord to me or, or he's off. The Lord said, you want your joy back? Sing for it. Make the sacrifice. Make the dedication. Get in the choir. Sing for your joy. And you shall have it. You're going to get a lot of people up there singing. Oh. Whoa. Some of you have excused yourself. I'm too old. No, you're lazy. Sing for your joy. The more you do for God, the more God does for you. Some of you just started paying their tithes. Uh, Patricia's uh, son, um, Josh, started paying his tithes. He said, Mom, I want to pay my tithes. That's a big deal. When a man starts paying his tithes, he's serious about God. Some of you, you haven't got healed, you haven't got saved because you got money and God told you to give me $100,000 of it. And you keep, oh, I'm not laughing. You're supposed to give me $100,000. I knew that the first time I laid eyes on you. You're supposed to give the church $100,000. Put it in my hand. The Lord told you that. Somebody said, I knew that preacher wanted money. I don't want your money. God can make money appear in my hand. But this is the way the Lord chose it. You're supposed to give me $100,000. You're not going to be healed. And you're not going to be delivered until you pay for it. I don't know. Maybe God don't like you as much as he likes me. But you're supposed to give the church $100,000. And when you do, God's going to heal you. God's going to heal all the things that you've been wanting God to do. And so that's your story. Uh, you owe... You owe uh, what do you call them? Anyhow, I don't want to make fun of you. Just do the will of God. So Josh started paying his tithes, and he, he got his paycheck, and he said, well, how much? It was 10%. Not 10 cent. 10 per. He said, who put the per in there? So he paid his tithes. Next couple of days, he got a check for $3,600. Unexpected. He come, he come and he said, my Lord, Mom, look at this. I got this money. But Jesus said, uh, well, you paid your tithes. God, God, all kind of things happen when you, when you get in alignment, when you get in tune where God can bless you. And, uh, and, and he says, oh, Okay, good, good. That's the best $143 I've ever spent in my life. Got $3,600. I'm going to tell you something. I got a word for you. God's going to be with you. I'm, I'm talking to you tithe payers, you offering givers. You cannot give the Lord. The Lord has sustained you. He will continue to sustain you. He will open doors as he sees fit. He will never let you go without I once was old and now uh, I once was young and now I'm old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. The Lord's blessing this church. The Lord's giving people uh, promotions on jobs. You know what I dreamed last night? I dreamed somebody gave me uh, $28,000. Why would I dream $28,000? Somebody gave me $28,000, and I was all excited about it. I was going to buy a, I was going to buy a fifth wheel. And the Lord said, no, no, I gave you that to give that to so-and-so and so-and-so. And in my dream, all of a sudden, all these people came, and when, it, and when uh, uh, I woke up, I didn't have a dime. <laughs> he said, I said, well, you, did you give it? He said, yeah, I just wanted to test your spirit if you don't be obedient to me. Oh, make a cake. 
That's what the prophet said. Well, the Lord's talking right now. Feed the man of God. Don't fear. God can put seven years of grain in your bucket. You know that. You know that oil. You know that oil that's you just been. Be careful. Right now. Right now, the Lord's filling the cruise of oil. It can't be, Brother Hurst. I've done licked it dry. I've stuck my finger in there so many times. I, it's as dry as a bone. Nope. When you stick it in there this time, you go, Ooh. pour it out. Don't hoard it. Pour it out. Mm. Because he's going to put some more in there for tomorrow. And next week, he's going to put some more. Some of you are worried about, oh, my God. What are we going to do when Joe Biden does a Green New Deal? Well, it's not my deal. I'm in the Jesus deal. I, I'm in another economy. Oh, Brother Hurst, don't bring politics into this. I'm so sick and tired of politics. Yes, you are, and you've let politics take your victory. You ought to keep politics over here. Oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost. You ought to build your life about Jesus and the kingdom of God and the principles of eternity. You want to mess with that? Keep it over here. Don't let it get it here. God sets them up and takes them down. Mm. Yeah. He gave me $28,000. I was going to put it as a down payment on a fifth wheel in my dream. And then somebody came up and said, Brother Hurst, and, and, Brother Hurst, and I, I gave it all away. And I said, Lord, I thought you gave that to me. He said, yeah, I did. Uh, I said, if you give it away. He said, I got where, more where that come from. And Rhonda said, time to get up. <laughs> God's putting meal in the barrel right now. Do what the Lord's telling you to do right now. Do what the Lord's telling you to do. The Lord may be telling somebody, write a check, give it to so-and-so. Brother Hurst, I can't do that. I, just do what the Holy Ghost is telling you to do. Amen. The mill will not run out. The oil will not run out. Hey, you've always made it. Right. He's going to be with you. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. You better listen to me. I, I almost feel checked to say this because... I want this to be received in the spirit, but there are much, much, much monetary blessings connected to that room over there. I don't have it all figured out, but I have a feeling in that prayer room, God's going to speak to people to do things. And you're going to say, the Lord's talking to me about money in the prayer room. And you're going to be faithful and do what the Lord tells. And then God's going to open up the windows of heaven and give you more. If, if you have $10, give a dollar. If you have $100, give $10. If you have $100,000, give $10,000. If you have a million dollars, give $100,000. If you have $10 million, give a million dollars. That's how you pay your tithes. Raise your hands and thank him for it. Opportunity to give. The opportunity to give. The opportunity to give. Give and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down. Shaken together. Full and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deal with one more thing. Fear of the future. Everybody say fear of the future. God is able to keep you. Jude 24. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. 
and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Brother Hurst, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to backslide. I'm afraid I'm going to fall away. I'm dealing with that spirit right now. That spirit, I'm speaking to you, you tormenting spirit. Leave right now. Leave. You're not welcome. Leave the mind. Leave the home. Leave this person. You are a trespasser. God can keep us. He is able. Somebody say, he is able to keep you from falling. Oh, brother, here's what we're going to do. God's going to keep you from falling. And God's going to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. And it's not going to be surviving by the hair of your chinny, chin, chin. He said, with exceeding joy. I prophesy. I prophesy right now. The Lord is banishing fear of the future. He is anointing you with fresh faith. He's anointing you with fresh power. And he's going to give you exceeding joy. You're not going to wake up and say, I don't know if I can make it. You're going to say, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. In the name of Jesus. I want you to stand up and I want you to praise the Lord if the Lord has touched your body, if the Lord has healed your mind, if the Lord has cleansed you in your spirit, if the Lord has delivered you from depression, fear, doubt, alcohol, nicotine, drug addictions, loving violence, anger. Come on. We got a lot to thank the Lord for. I'd thank him. I'd seal it tight. I'd seal it up. I'd seal it with praise.